Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. When I uh, decided to become a hunter, I was in my mid 40s. Yeah. I didn't come from a hunting background, and I just decided to pursue it on my own and I figured it out. Yeah. I joined the Wild Sheep Foundation Alberta chapter. Mm -hmm. And then I decided in 2018 to come to my first sheep show here in Reno because I wanted to check out the national organization. Yeah. I flew here without knowing a single person. Then I made a ton of friends that weekend. Yeah. Friends that I have today, it really is an incredible organization. Mm -hmm. Really passionate people. People yeah. who love wild sheep are nuts for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're a small, tight group and I think that's part of it. Hey everyone, if you're watching this podcast, then it's probably safe to say that you're like me and you love hunting, shooting sports, and of course you support conservation of wildlife and wild places. I really believe in the power of free market principles. So I wanna ask you today to join me in making an impact and consider supporting companies like Ruger, Onyx Hunt, and Dead Downwind that are not only supporting this podcast, but they are also supporting the values and traditions that we live out day to day. Thank you all for watching. Hey everybody, thank you for joining us for this episode of the Wild and Uncut Podcast. I am your host, Christy Titus, and I'm here at the Wild Sheep Foundation National Convention with my good friend, Renee Thornton, which has, she has spearheaded the Women Hunt Initiative, but your husband is also kind of a big deal around here <laughs> as president of the organization, and the two of you are like the most incredible conservation duo that I have ever seen in action. Like, I cannot say enough wonderful things about both of you and what you're doing for conservation, hunters, and just the industry as a whole. So thank you so much. I know this week is so busy for taking the time to sit down with all of us. Oh, I'm so pleased that you asked me to join you and I'm I'm a huge fan of yours as you oh, know. Oh, you're so, so sweet. <laughs> it's a great pleasure for me to be here. Yeah, and so you have been with the Sheep family officially how many years now? Since 2018, that's when I joined. That is insane how fast time goes by. Um, and I'm trying to think back to my first sheep camp. And I don't honestly remember what year it was, but I know I was in my 30s and I won't say how old I am now. So I've been coming here a long time. And it is literally like family here. And, and people, you know, we go to all these shows and we attend all of these events and I cannot stress to people enough how much the Sheep Show is different it is. from every other show. It is really so family centered and you know, everything that we do, um, you guys came up with a tagline of come for the sheep, stay for the party. Right. Like legitimately, that's what it is. It's come for the sheep, come for the conservation, but really stay for the party. And everybody has a great time this weekend. It's true. And you know, it's funny you mentioned that because when I uh, decided to become a hunter, I was in my mid forties yeah. in 2017 and I didn't come from a hunting background and I just decided to pursue it on my own and I figured it out. Yeah. And uh, one of the first things I did was I joined locally in the province of Alberta where yeah. I'm from in Canada. I joined the Wild Sheep Foundation Alberta chapter. Mm -hmm. And then I decided in 2018 to come to my first sheep show here in Reno because I wanted to check out the national organization. Yeah. I flew here without knowing a single person. Look at and you. I, uh, you have I, some gumption, lady. I know, love it. Well, I and I just... I, to your point though, I came here, I didn't know a single person and I made a ton of friends that weekend. Yeah. Friends that I have today, it really is an incredible organization. Mm -hmm. Really passionate people. People yeah. who love wild sheep are nuts for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're a small, tight group and I think that's part of it. Yeah, it is It is so much of it. And you know, I came here for so many years also um, on my own. And I remember walking into some of these banquet halls and I didn't know anyone. And now these are some of the most important people in my life. Right. Um, you know, you have people like Jim and Leanne Craig. Right. Like, which I absolutely love. They're some of the most philanthropic humans I've ever met and giving and just, they're like my surrogate parents. And I know they're that way for you too. Yeah, they're and wonderful. And then we have all of the guys that, the, you know, Wounded Warrior Outdoors. And they are here every year. Yeah. And, you know, the sacrifice that they've made for our country and the things that they've went through. And, and everybody 
I mean, I could go on for an hour. All of the outfitters that you hunt with and share memories with. But when you walk into a room, it doesn't matter if you know anyone or not. Because by the time you leave, you're going to have like a new best friend. It's true. It's <laughs> it so is true. so true. Yeah. yeah. And so you were new at hunting. You came here knowing no one, never, never coming from a hunting background. You had this passion and this calling. And you spearheaded this initiative, this women hunt initiative, which is so impactful. And and I must say, I'll, well, I'll say that part later, but um, let everybody know where did women hunt come from? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, because of my, my journey as an adult onset solo female hunter. And adult onset hunter. Yes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know, I um, it was a great journey. I, I, you know, yeah. so much of it was positive. The majority of my journey was positive, but there were certainly some challenges. And I know that anybody who tries to enter something new, it can be challenging and 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 intimidating. Yeah. Because the things that someone that's coming into the hunt or in the hunting community the littlest things that they know they often take those things for granted right so you you sometimes don't realize how much you know until you meet someone that's a, a new hunter it's true and you know i i am i mean you said it earlier you know take some gumption to come to something like this yeah. by yourself so i was raised with three older brothers but nobody hunts um but nevertheless being raised around boys you know i'm i was a little tougher i guess yeah. maybe and um and really independent and tenacious but still i i found that first year at time challenging yeah and um, and so after I you know I just dived into this whole community especially when I came to sheep show mm -hmm. met all these amazing people and I mean really some great friends that's not an exaggeration and really great support yeah. and um, and uh, that led to me um, just coming out and volunteering more and I really can't stress that enough I'm so about giving back yeah the more you can give back and volunteer whatever it is you have a capacity to do is a great thing to do for any organization well, we all have our own special gift and you yeah. hear this all the time from I get it all the time from people like how do you start an event how do you do these things and it's like well what are you good at right because not everybody is good at doing what I do and not everybody wants to do what I do so where where do you want to serve what is your interest in serving it might yeah. be you know something that we would think is like the simplest task is so critical to things being important and it not everybody wants to do the same things yeah, and, right. and that's it, finding your place and way to serve based on your time and, and based on your talent yeah. is so important. It is, you know, and to that point, you know, Gray, my husband, yes. president and CEO, he has that great expression, you know, do you have your time, talent or treasure? Or maybe yes. all of them or maybe yeah. one of them, right? But whatever it is. And so I just started to give back. Mm -hmm. And then one of the things I did is um, in the summer of 2018, I went to Montana. I always fly fished every summer in Montana. I drive down from Calgary and, um, and I decided to go to the open house in Bozeman, yeah. the Wild Sheep Foundation's open house. And there I met uh, past chairman of the board and a whole bunch of other directors and individuals and they started to hear my story yeah and they were the ones who approached me and said we'd like you to do something we'd like the women wild sheep foundation would like to do something to help this path be a little bit easier for women who are interested and maybe don't necessarily have the support or background so that's kind of how it started yeah yeah that's incredible. And so you've taken this now, you've partnered with some outstanding organizations like the FTW Ranch. Yeah. And I have been to FTW, thankfully, a couple of times. It's an incredible place to go learn and train and, and have this true full circle experience around some really exceptional people in a safe, like controlled, awesome environment yeah. and so you guys are partnering with them and and ladies are able to come and learn all kinds of shooting sports skills you're actually able to hunt yeah. you know walk everybody through what you're doing at that facility sure so what we did um you know we 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 canvassed our membership to ask them what they want from us and that really led us to driving some sort of skills-based training yeah. we didn't want to recreate that wheel lots of people offer all sorts of training opportunities i had been to ftw as well mm -hmm. and um uh, uh, the owner of the ranch, Tim Fallon, had come up with this idea of a new hunter course during the pandemic year when, you know, things got a little weird yeah. for business and he had to start thinking differently. And uh, the great thing about their new hunter course is um, in four days they can take a person who's never even handled a firearm and they can get you comfortable, accurate, proficient to 300 yards, which is a very safe Absolutely. shooting distance for hunting. And, um, you know, a couple days of really intensive rifle training, and then you're out in the field with guides yeah. and you're hunting. And from that point on, you're taught uh, field trailing, tracking, uh, stalking, different, you know, hunting from blinds, all sorts of different hunting methods. 
Uh, you're taught how to field dress, mm -hmm. how to butcher. They bring in Chef Joshua Schwenka from Gastronomy Outdoors in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. He comes in, he teaches uh, um, uh, culinary cooking, yes. wild game cooking, um, and you kind of in four days, truthfully, get an entire Experience. gamut of how to learn how to hunt. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. This is incredible. And so ladies can apply for scholarship and they can also, you know, purchase a, the, the the, uh, if they want to purchase and buy into attending, is that correct? Well, the way we run it is we, we base it like a, almost like a grant. And so okay. we take applications from women across the United States and Canada. We have a committee, a volunteer-based committee. We use uh, a blind assessment, uh, pretty comprehensive with a scoring rubric to make sure that everybody's being assessed mm -hmm. equitably. And then we select 12 women from that large demographic and they are sponsored fully sponsored by the Wild Sheep Foundation, the FTW Ranch, Women Hunt, um, and many of our corporate sponsors, Sitka, Kenetrek, Yeti, and, and many others. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and then one of the things is Weatherby, our good partner, uh, provides the rifles. Mm -hmm. And um, the women have the option at the course of buying that rifle package right on site after shooting yeah. it for four days. They're comfortable with their, with their, uh, with their firearm and their optics. And, um, but yeah, no, for, this, for these women, they get an opportunity to learn um, proficiency with firearms and hunting mm -hmm. and all the all the game breaking down and cooking and it doesn't cost them anything other than their flight to San Antonio. Which and is truly incredible. It's incredible, yeah. you know. And so one of the great things about our program is that it's tiered. It has three stages. Stage one, we bring them to the ranch and teach them. Stage two, they go back home and we set them up with a mentor. Mm -hmm. Mentorship in me is what was my biggest challenge as a new hunter, having somebody to take me out into the field and guide me. So we set them up with a mentor back home. And then the third step is we ask them to give back. And it's actually something they agree to before we bring them onto the program. Mm -hmm. And our class of 2021 has been, you know, out of, out of their, in their giving back stage rather for over a year. And they're doing incredible things. Well, and, and a lot of these so ladies are here. Yeah. And they're actually on the ground helping the attendees, helping exhibitors, yeah. they're volunteering their time, really giving back to the organization as yes. a whole. And so not only are they invested in, okay, we went through this four-day process, but they're reinvesting in the importance of how hunting truly ties into the whole philosophy and of conservation. Absolutely. And that's a really key component of our coursework. Absolutely. So we worked with the FTW Ranch to tweak their course content somewhat so that we could introduce the concept of the North American model of wildlife mm -hmm. conservation. We think it's really important that that all hunters have a basic understanding of that model. It's what yeah. informs our rights to hunt and um, help with the conservation of wild animals and wild places um, in North America. So that's a really big component. And here, this is the first year at the Sheep Show that you've actually had a women hunt booth. Yeah. And so next year when you guys are you're going to listen to this podcast, obviously, after the event is over. So next year when you come to the Sheep Show, look for that women hunt booth. If you want to connect with other women, you want to find some outreach, even if you haven't been through the program it's still a great resource for sure that, that you can come and actually connect with other like-minded women yeah absolutely and you know that's a part of our our mantra too is to just build that community and you know we like to partner with all our, our organizations SCI NWTF yeah. um, DSC so many great organizations that have great programs that are based around uh, strong uh, women who want to be involved in hunting conservation um, and the outdoors and so you know we're, we're thrilled that you know you know what it's like there's so many of us who are active and trying to promote and and uh and you know it's just it it's it's great to have some competition but really we're all partners so if women want to apply for the grant or scholarship how do they do that and what are the time frames on that? Right, so it just varies a little bit year to year depending on when we can get some timing at the ranch. But typically the best way to find that out is if you were to um, follow us on social. Mm -hmm. um, we have presence on Facebook, Instagram. We also have on the Wild Sheep Foundation's website. And that's where we make our announcements. But typically the timing is a spring application period. And then uh, we announce in the late spring or very early summer and then we're, in the, we're at the ranch in the fall. That's fantastic. Yeah. And also this year you have spearheaded bringing the culinary corner here. You bet. And I am so excited because obviously I like eating. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always looking for new cooking tips um, and having that full circle like wild game. Hey, we're not just hunters. And I think there's so much um, 
misconception when it comes to trophy hunting. A lot of people assume, oh, well, you're trophy hunting, and I hate that word. It's not trophy hunting. We are selective hunting, right. and we absolutely use the animals that we harvest. And I think having that culinary aspect to this event is very valuable um, because there are a lot of people that don't understand that the animals that we harvest are consumptive. That's right. Um, and they are sustaining many families. Um, throughout North America and the world, you know, depending on where you're going hunting. And, and obviously in this room, there's a lot of guides and outfitters here. You know, when I've, I've been to BC and hunted in some extremely remote locations where transporting wildlife is not easy, but you have a tremendous population of local people um, in villages or nearby communities that are very dependent on wild game. Yeah. And so we we as a community, as part of the wild sheep family, as part of hunters are very good about giving back mm -hmm. and and being um, sustainable in our harvesting practices. Yeah, for sure. I'm, you know, I agree with you. So many people have a misconception about the role of hunters and our role in conservation. And um, it's just part of our responsibility and our dialogues with people to help them um, uh, understand that concept better. Mm -hmm. um, but um, uh, we... Um, uh, we brought in Chef Joshua Schwenke to uh, the Sheep Show this year. He's the executive chef of the Women Hunt Program and the Wild Sheep Foundation now. Mm -hmm. He's got a new role. Mm -hmm. And we uh, wanted to introduce this culinary corner. So he is a hunter himself and he specializes in wild game preparation. And so he's here at the Sheep Show for three days. He's doing uh, classes all throughout all three days. And uh, we're really excited. You know, we yeah. have Camp Chef as our sponsor. They've been fantastic to us mm -hmm. as sponsors. And, um, and, and Chef Josh... And who Josh doesn't is have like a camp chef smoker right really yeah. like we all have one and i i want to know how to do a better job with that thing right yes. like, this is yeah. a great opportunity <laughs> for us all to improve our skill set on that exactly yeah. so we're really excited that he's here it's going splendidly well already today mm -hmm. and we expect it's just going to get better all weekend and uh and it's going to be an annual event so that is awesome. And this is just one part of so many of the amazing facets that the Wild Sheep put together during your guys' convention. One of, I think, the most legendary events here is the Less Than One Club. Oh, yeah. Like, this is the party that nobody wants to miss because if you're not already a sheep hunter and you haven't harvested a sheep, it is your chance to put your name in the hat to win a sheep hunt. And you guys don't just give away one sheep hunt. You guys give away multiple sheep hunts yeah, at that event. That's right. And it's free pints and a good time. So you come for the sheep, stay for the party, and it is like the night kickoff yeah. for Friday night. And maybe win so a sheep, much fun. sheep hunt. I, exactly, yeah. right? Yeah. It, I mean, and they're, everybody pulls together. And I think the first one I went to, that first event, there was only like a couple hundred people right. there. Now there's like 1,200 or yeah, more easily. that come to yeah. that event. It is unbelievable the growth that that community has had or that group has had in that club. Yeah, and, and you know, one of the fun things about that, don't you find, is that even even successful sheep hunters go because they want to see the energy yes. and the excitement yes. when uh, somebody wins one of those hunts. It's incredible in that room. Well, and I think we could all agree that sheep hunting is really type two fun. Yeah. So sometimes when we're out there and we're on the mountain and we're doing some of these hunts, we're like, wait a second. This is really hard. Why am I doing this? Yeah. And then afterwards, you're like, man, that was the best experience of my life. Yes. Hey guys, Christy Titus here. Because I don't have the opportunity to get out on the ground to scout some of my non-resident hunting unit draws, I'm at home doing some e-scouting. Using Onyx Hunt lets me prepare for my upcoming hunts this fall right from my computer. And now you have access to 3D features and functions that are found within the app right on your desktop. Using Onyx Hunt to help you e-scout ahead of time means that when you hit the ground this hunting season, you'll have a better lay of the land so you can spend your time hunting and not trying to figure out where to go. If you haven't already, do yourself a favor and download Onyx Hunt and try it today. And then after Less Than One Club, on the weekends, you guys have a full lineup of seminars. And I've spoken at a couple seminars, and that's what I love about you guys. You bring in different speakers every year to talk about a plethora of different topics from backpack fitness, backpacking, uh, long range shooting. I've yep. done some positional shooting um, classes here before. and. 
you guys have everything, the whole gamut. Like these people that, you know, we follow online and we really look up to, um, they're out here teaching and educating us. And then we also have like our women's hunting panel as yeah, well. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And I mean, you're in that class though, yeah. of people that people look up oh, at, you know? You. <laughs> no, it's true. And um, and so I'm thrilled like that you're gonna be on the Women Hunt panel yeah. discussion this year. Um, you know, Christy's gonna be joining me and Jana Waller mm -hmm. and then two young 13-year-old sh badass sheep hunting oh my girls, gosh. you know? They, Cammie they, Cunningham yes. from Texas. Yes. Youngest female to complete her four North American wild sheep at 13. She was just a week past her 12th birthday. But um, uh, I met her today. Did you? She and her sister both. Yes. And her sister is an aspiring. Uh, she'll she'll be in her sister's footsteps. Oh yeah. She was so cute, and when I met her, she was adorable. And I'm like, well, I hope I can be like you one day. And when she <laughs> saw her face. She's like, what? And I'm like, I want to be a slam sheep hunter too. Uh, I want to be like you. She is absolutely adorable. They are both Super just sweet precious. girls, and they're performers. I know. So they're really singing talented. for us they on are. Saturday. Too. Too, they and are playing a whole musical duet. You and, bet. Um, An original song they wrote about sheep hunting. Yes. Yeah, they're both sheep hunters. Stormy got uh, her first sheep last year, a doll sheep, a real cranker too. Oh yeah. And she's going to. Forty-one gonna, inch. I know. Is what, yeah. yeah. And she's going to bring that skull in for people to see during the seminar mm -hmm. on Saturday. And then uh, the other young lady who's going to be there is Brooklyn Whitfield from Alberta. Mm -hmm. She's now 13, but last year she was 12 years old when she harvested a Rocky Mountain bighorn. She's the youngest female Alberta resident to have done that. So. So, you know, between yourself and Jana and uh, Cammie in Brooklyn and then getting Stormy up to perform with her sister later on in the, in the panel, it's going to be a great 90 yeah. minutes. You know, we're going to be talking about great things, sheep hunting, uh, weird things people have found or experienced on their hunts, and, you know, the roles of mentors, how important our fathers are and, and other, other people in our lives on our journeys. Yeah, and it's so interesting because you think about sheep hunting and a lot of people say, well, I could never afford to sheep hunt. I, I don't. I don't want to, I don't need to do that. I don't want to participate with that. And, and there's so many people in this room, like you go to the lesson one club and you see how many of us have not sheep hunted, but we're aspiring sheep hunters right. and we have that dream and there is ways for us to become sheep hunters. You know, yeah. we can win these raffles and, and participate in, you know, in, in the lower 48, we are so fortunate to even have our names in the hats in some of these great states like Oregon, Wyoming, you know, Arizona, I mean, all, all. Colorado, there's tons of places where we can actually sheep hunt and and um, draw those opportunities. So I, I like to tell people I'm okay being an aspiring sheep hunter. Yeah. I'm fine with that because it gives me something to look forward to. And it's not just for rich people, you know. It is it is it can be for everybody. It is not easy to always get those tags, right. but we're all here because we have a dream, and that dream really cements us. And it and it is so important that regardless of whether we think that we'll be able to do something, it's I think it's important that we know that we've made a difference. So you know there is very low sheep populations, right. which is why tags are so hard to get, yeah. which is why also it's so important that we're all here putting and keeping sheep on the mountain. That's right. And that's the great thing is that even though so many of us, almost everybody here is an aspiring sheep hunter, but nevertheless, the the probabilities of getting a, a successful sheep hunt under your belt are low, right? Mm -hmm. It's a challenging hunt and populations are low. It's tough to get those tags. And nevertheless, we, you know, we, what we care about more than anything is that resource. Absolutely. And, um, and, and they're precious to us. And to me, they're the most iconic species in North America. Well, and because of a lot of the work that is done with this organization, uh, sheep populations are, are thriving and flourishing and, yes. and our numbers are growing. Yeah. And, it, and it's because of free market conservation principles it's because right. people are showing up they're investing in wildlife and wild places and that is fundamental and that's what I really love about the North American model of wildlife conservation and free market organizations we aren't taxed we aren't forced we're here because we love wildlife that's right and we are truly the first crusaders in conservation as hunters and yeah. you know we pioneered the North American model um, and we have imposed self taxation from right. the Pittman Roberts Act yep. a lot of people don't realize this you know every time we buy hunting licenses and tags you know we're funding statewide conservation budgets and to the tune of 75 percent of those budgets that's right it's a tremendous amount and now we're not even talking about how much these tags are auctioning off for. right which and is a whole other economy it's a whole other economy yeah. and there's you know there is always that you know both sides of the barrel well the tags are you know they're so expensive i can't afford to buy them at, at auction okay well yes but the maybe that might be the case but those tags that are at auction also look at the dollars that are generated and 
what that is leaving for a legacy for that next generation of wildlife and hunters. Exactly. It's what's giving people that opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And we're going to have more opportunities because of what we're doing here. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, when you were talking about flourishing populations, of course, like with any wildlife populations, there's challenges. Yeah. And you know, the Wild Sheep Foundation with its partners have ex some of the world's best wildlife mm -hmm. biologists working for them to help solve those problems, disease transfer, or um, you know, what's been happening in Alaska the last couple of years with freeze and thaw cycles oh, and, the, and the sheep can't get break through the ice, you know? So there's professionals within this organization and our partner organizations who work really tirelessly to try to um, improve those situations. And I love that you guys called an emergency meeting about the sheep in Alaska at this event. Right. And you're like, hey, we're the sheep community. We need to look at this and address this and work with Fish and Wildlife yeah. and work with these programs to make sure that we can protect these, these animals while they're on the mountain. Yeah. And that is so impactful. I, I don't, I think hunters get such a bad rap. Um, but it is, it is so important to be here for so many reasons. It is, you're here for the sheep, but you stay for the fun. But you have so many opportunities to possibly win tags. So yeah. besides the less than one club, I just <laughs> want to put it all out here, how you can actually be a sheep hunter on a, like a normal person budget. So we can win through less than one, which somebody's got to win. It might as well be you. That's Come right. buy the tag or the ticket and try. Um, you also have your life member breakfast. Yes. So if you join Wild Sheep Foundation, do it and just become a life member, not only because it's awesome, but because it's awesome. And if you attend the breakfast on Saturday morning, you have to be present to win. You, they, they do auction. This year, you're doing a desert sheep hunt. Yep. And That's a raffle drawing. Yeah. And yep. if you're a Summit Life member, you get I think you three, get two or three entries. Three entries. Three entries. Yeah. So you're like triple, triple possibilities That's there. right. Yeah. And Saturday we have raffles. That's right. Saturday we have a ma major section of the floor here is uh, raffles and there's multiple sheep hunts on that raffle as well. Yeah. Grizzly bear hunts, moose yeah. hunts, sheep hunts. Plus in this room there are some of the world's best guides and outfitters and the greatest people in the world and I I just cannot stress it enough how much fun this event is. You guys have a huge kids room too. Yes we do. Yeah the youth youth conservation event is huge here and uh, Dr. Ryan Brock the youth mm -hmm. educator for uh, Wild Sheep Foundation he runs that program. Mm -hmm. He knocks it out of the park. I think uh, I could be wrong on this number but I believe since the inception of his program he's directly impacted over 50,000 kids. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Right yeah. here in the state of Nevada. It's you know? unbelievable yeah. how many kids that he's reaching. And, you know, I think SCI even has a sensory safari here. Yeah. And they have like a trailer that people oh, that's can walk right. through yes. and touch the animals. Because most of the taxidermy here, I'm going to just tell you right now, it's really beautiful, but you're not supposed to touch it. <laughs> but the SCI sensory safari, yeah. they, you can actually go in there and you can touch the animals and learn about them. And that's really awesome. First Hunt Foundation is here. Yes. And they have a great outreach program. So if you're a first time hunter, like they have have um, chapters in over 40 states across the country. They have a presence here. They're giving back to the sheep community yeah. and they're trying to spread the word on encouraging everyone of any age into being a first time hunter as well. So you guys be like Renee <laughs> and just come here because you never know. I mean, if you have any desire to hunt, this is such a fun community. It is. And a great place to be. You even have people that get the lifelong commitment. They do. They are writing for the brand literally to tattooing it on their body. That's right. <laughs> that's a great corner. You know? is, how many people have done it? Have you guys done a survey? I don't know. That's a great question. Like, I'm, I'm sure like, they have that statistic someplace. Yeah, yeah. I want to know. I want Gray to be like, hey, you guys, I just want you guys, this is a challenge. So far, we've had, you know, 500 people ride for the brand. Are you going to do it this year? I don't have any tattoos, so I'm not going to do it. Yogi, are you doing it? I don't know. <laughs> are you Are you going to do one? No, that's not my, not my thing. But you know, Gray was the very first person to get a tattoo at the sheep show was he really in, like in the corner yeah that is so yeah. fun yeah and gray has been president and ceo of the sheep foundation for 15 years yes and what he has done with this organization and how much this has changed and impacted yeah. lives families ecosystems yeah. the sustainability of wildlife the work that that man has done it, it is it is almost incomprehensible. I agree. It really is tremendous. And you know, um, Glenn Landris, the current chairman of the board, said it last night when they acknowledged Gray's 15 years of service. You know, when Gray came on board 15 years ago, the organization used to be called the Foundation for North American Wild Sheep. And, um, you know, they were in trouble back then. They mm -hmm. had $35,000 in the bank. They were essentially bankrupt. And he had uh, staff, uh, uh, human beings with families that he had to mm -hmm. take care of. And he, he rebuilt this organization basically from the ashes. And yeah. it, look 
at it today? Oh, it's it's thriving. It's a thriving community. It is wall to wall of just amazing. And if you guys want to get here, and it's Thursday's the quieter day. It is. <laughs> so just a little hack on hunts. Get here on Thursday. Get in early because it gets super crazy busy. Yeah. And it is it is the best craziness ever. The banquets are amazing. The food is good. Um, there's so much going on. Backpack races. Oh my gosh, yes. So, horse packing competitions. Yeah, so they do horse packing competitions. So after everybody's a little bit shined up, if you know what I mean, um, they have a giant plastic horse and they tie a diamond hitch on this horse and then they judge it. So how straight the diamond is, if the packs are floppy, if the halter's on right, like they- How quickly you can do how it. How quickly, like yeah. this is fully judged. But the best one is the backpack races. Friday night, oh, off the charts. Uh, you know, I, I can't even believe that they allow this at the pepper mill. You know, I'm not going to lie. I think they turn a blind eye. Yeah. <laughs> like, this isn't happening. Our insurance policy does not need to know about this. They don't need to know. It's so much fun. You know, they're so cooperative with us that we set up, um, they use luggage carts from the bell desk and um, and they set up tires and there's a set of stairs to run up. And those stairs are treacherous, man. Oh my gosh. And uh, the Just folks put on these weighted Just imagine a bunch backpacks. of intoxicated yeah. people with 40... I don't I think the packs are 40 pounds. Something and like that. I can't remember yeah. what the other weight class is. There's a, yeah. a male and female class. Yeah. Uh, because we, we're that way. We have male and female classes here. Um, we're not that woke. Right. So um, we, the two weight classes. And um, so you run the obstacle course. So imagine people, end of the night, a little intoxicated or a lot, depends on the person. Uh, running with these weighted backpacks through tires, through luggage carts, upstairs, down. People are falling like... Some of the falls I've seen, I'm like, oh, Ooh. some like, of them have been epic. Tomorrow yeah. they're not okay. <laughs> like, it is unreal. Um, and some some people have strategies. Some people wear boots. Some people go barefoot. Right. You know, it's I've true. seen girls in high heels do it. Yep. Like, let's be honest, yep. it's pretty impressive. There they was, got their pantyhose on <laughs> right. and they're giving her. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like a it's a jet event. fuel thing yeah. going on. Yeah. Uh, great entertainment. You know, last night we had Jimmy Herman here. Um, Jimmy is an exceptional performer. Yeah. He, he was Carrie Underwood's fiddler for, I don't even know how long. Like, the music was great. The entertainment was great. We have Tessie Lou and the Shotgun, um, I think it's Shotgun Stars, playing Saturday night. Saturday night. Yeah. We love her. Yeah. Um, it is just so much fun. Like, I could go on and on and on. But the one thing that I'm yet to do. Tell me. The Outer Circle. Oh, really? Have you done the Outer Circle? Nope. Do but you know I'm what surprised. it is? Nope. You don't know what it is. Nope. <laughs> You've not seen the toe. The toe? Oh, the that. Toe. Oh, yes, I know what the you mean. Toe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did Sorry. you know? Everybody's I, like, yeah. what is going on with the toe? Okay. No, I know the toe. The toe and yeah. the mouse. There's yes. two. Oh, gosh. I, I've not done it. Okay, I'm not a part of this club, but you can buy into this club if you have cojones. Yes. I don't. So they have a human toe. I don't know where you guys, where did you get the toe? I think that was out of Alaska. I think it was a bar in Alaska where that came from. Like somebody had a frostbite or a cadet. We don't know. Where I don't the really toe came know, from. but there's a toe. It's a real human toe. It's a real human toe. And they put it in a shot glass. Yeah. And you pay for this honor. Honor. <laughs> that you have your <laughs> shot of choice poured over the human toe and you drink it. And inevitably, this toe is going to smash you in the face. You it's know, gonna touch your lips. It's gonna touch you. Yeah. And everybody has not everybody. It's a rite of passage here if you want to be part of the outer circle with the human toe. I, I haven't done it. I'm out. I didn't know it was called that here. It's the outer circle. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because you know how some groups have the inner circle. I didn't know. This I did is not the know outer this. Circle. No, this is just what I'm told. This hmm. is this is like on I the must streets. Be in I must be on the outer circle of the outer circle. No. <laughs> yeah. And I think actually, I'm correcting myself. I think it's a bar in the Yukon that has is a that toe. What it is? I think so, yeah. Is because that where it came from? I'm trying to remember. I'm not sure if it, that's where this one came from, but um, one of my committee members on Women Hunt, Linda Demmer, she's uh, from South Carolina. She was sheep hunting in the Yukon and she kissed the toe at a bar in the Yukon. I remember oh, that boy. now. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. I don't know. Strong man. stomachs. I, I haven't, I have not. I don't even like to touch my husband's feet. So, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm okay not doing it. I don't want to do the outer circle. But the point is, is this is some redneck stuff going on here. It is ultimately so much fun. And, but beyond that, beyond the fun, 
you guys are really just doing such an incredible job of entertaining and conserving or enhancing and reaching out with you know your youth programs your ladies programs and then for all of us aspiring sheep hunters so I, I just can't say enough great things well, and it is you. my favorite event my face hurts <laughs> by the end of this event my throat and voice is usually gone <laughs> and um you know yogi the first night we were here he had friends calling him they're like we don't know what time we got in last night <laughs> and um that's fine we're we we're here this is the sheep show and it's a great time and the the cool thing what i love about it is it's not divided. Like you don't have people going over here and here and some people go to this or that. And in some events you go to, everything is so spread out. Yeah. Um, some people are going to dinner off site or doing events off site. What I love about Sheep Show is everybody flows together. Yes. So everybody is going to the less than one club. Right. Everybody goes to the banquet at night. And yeah. if you don't want to go to the banquet at night and you do choose to go do your own dinner off site, some people do. Everybody comes back to the pepper mill and we all hang out together. At the round bar. Yeah, that's right. The yeah. circle bar, in the hallway, in the banquet hall. So the cool thing you guys do is after dinner's done being served, you open up those doors. People can watch the auctions, the entertainment. It's it's welcome to everyone whether you bought a dinner ticket or not that's right and it is such a great sense of community so everybody you know just because you don't come to the banquet and do the dinner doesn't mean you don't get to party afterwards that's right yeah and there's no cab you needed right you just stay right there at the pepper mill and you just hey pepper mill is a great friend of the wild sheep foundation yeah. they really are they're wonderful hosts yeah, yeah. yeah. they've done a great job yeah. and every year i feel like they've raised the bar on the excellence that they provide there and, and they've just done a great job and you know reno has been a very welcoming city for for the wild sheep foundation and, and the family and yeah. all of us yeah and as an exhibitor i have to tell you i had a horrible drive coming down here it was like snow and awful i was like old lady white knuckling the whole way and i get here and you guys had like 15 volunteers standing there with carts ready to help me offload my trailer we offloaded my trailer my husband was like a half hour or 40 minutes behind me seriously everything was unloaded before he even got here wow and it was like i saw That's everyone impressive. and it was such a mental relief for me because it was so stressful just getting here with the weather conditions and everything and then just to see all those smiling faces it yeah. was just like oh thank you guys I'm here and I can just take a deep breath because I know the rest of the weekend is just going to be epic. You know, it's it's really good of you to point out the exceptional volunteers in this organization because yeah. we do have an amazing volunteer crew. As a matter of fact, as a nonprofit, almost all your muscles volunteer, yeah. right? And uh, I'm glad you had such a great experience. Oh, every yeah. year. Everybody is amazing. Yeah. And now we have, you know, the ladies that are part of the Women Hunt Initiative that have been receiving that grant. They're, we're just growing this wild sheep family That's every right. year. and. That's awesome. It is. And, and not just the wild sheep family, you know, like I really think it's so important that people like yourself and myself and others find these ways to nurture and bring along more women yeah. because as we talked about earlier, we're so misunderstood. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that women lend a different voice to this conversation. You know, it's not a good or a bad thing. We're, we're just simply different from yeah. men. We communicate differently yeah. and we have different reasons for hunting sometimes. Sometimes we have similar reasons. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have different reasons. And I think that we just bring a different voice to the conversation and that can only help to help people understand um, our role in wildlife conservation. And you know what else I love about this room, speaking of women, is you know women used to like take the back seat on credibility. Right. As hunters, guides, outfitters, there is some badass women that are in this room that are running outfits that are yep. guiding that are like legitimate, the real deal, and they're given as much respect as the men. There is no disparity of gender here. Yeah. And that's what I love about this room. You know, if you are a woman and you're like, you know what, I wanna go hunt with another awesome lady, there's a room full yeah. of awesome lady guides, awesome lady outfitters that are- Tough as nails. Oh, yeah. 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 Like beyond tough. Yeah. yeah. Like, I used to think I was tough at one point. I know now I'm no longer tough. <laughs> I'm like, I'm okay with that. But there are some women in here that their skill set will just blow your mind. And, you know, I, I've hunted with some women like that, like Miguela from um, North River Outfitting. Like, I hunted with her, and she she's living in the bush, flown into the back country for months at a time. Right. And, I mean, I look up to women like that. These gals are, like, straight up getting it done. And, and this is the place to meet them. 
to interact with them, to learn from them. And then if you want to go hunting with them, book a trip with them. Exactly. And the great thing too is that, you know, a lot of the outfitters here, they're not just North American based. We have international outfitters too. And there are mm -hmm. some real female powerhouses uh, yeah. running outfitting agencies mm -hmm. um, outside of North America who are here as well. So if you have an interest in hunting in New Zealand or South Africa mm -hmm. um, or any part of Africa for that matter, um, you know, you can find, you can find those women here too. Yeah, it is an incredible spot. So yeah. I just thank you so much for, I know you're so busy this weekend and I'm just so thankful that you can share with our viewers and listeners how impactful what you're doing here with the Women Hunt Initiative has been and then how we need more people coming here. Yeah, We need more people getting involved in conservation. We need more inclusion. And if you guys are out there and you yourself want to start hunting or you know someone that wants to start hunting or if you know a kid, an adult, it doesn't matter bring them into our community, come get here and get involved because this is where it's at. You bet. Thank you so much. Is there, I, you know, if anybody wants to get involved in Women Hunt, yeah. where do they go? Okay, um, uh, best place to find us, uh, quickest way to find us, I suppose, is on the Wild Sheep Foundation's website. So that's wildsheepfoundation.org. And then there's a drop down for Women Hunt under programs. Uh, alternatively, we're also on Facebook mm -hmm. and Instagram. We have a YouTube channel that we're starting to populate some nice. content with. Yeah, so um, that's, you know, that's a great way to reach out to us on any one of those platforms. We'll get back to you. As a member of me, myself or my committee will get back to you. And we have a really burgeoning, like rapidly growing online presence. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the women who interact with us on Instagram and Facebook are, are you know, they're, they're always happy to chime in. If you got a question, mm -hmm. you'll get answers. But, uh, and you know, Christy, you're an amazing resource. Oh, I, uh, thank you. I remember the first time you came to a woman hunt seminar in 2020 or 2019 rather, and you were uh, talking about the different things that you helped to promote on your site and in, in your platforms. You know, I, uh, thank you so much for oh. being such an inspiration and so, so supportive um, for all of us involved in wildlife and, and outdoors uh, lifestyle, but especially for women. So thank oh, you. Yeah, and no, thank you for having me. I am so thankful to be here. And I encourage all of you to get online, get connected to their social channels, check out their website. But more importantly, get down here to Reno and come hang out with us because we're fun. <laughs> We're, we're cool for, you know, middle-aged people. It's fine. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. We're cool. Come hang out with us. You won't regret it. <laughs> At least I think I'm cool. Whatever. <laughs> and uh, thank you all for tuning in to this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast from the Wild Sheep Foundation National Convention with my awesome guest, Renee Thornton. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.